Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Clint Weeder here with McMill CPAs, along with Andrew Steffensmeyer, uh, bringing you uh, this webinar here today from Norfolk on this uh, brisk Thursday morning. So uh, we thought it would be good after we've had a webinar on the PPP and then also on um, some of the HR issues that a lot of the small businesses out there are experiencing. We thought it'd be helpful to kind of go through and do a kind of what we call kind of a catch-all because in this latest stimulus package, there was a lot of miscellaneous tax items included in it. So we thought we'd have this webinar to kind of hit on those and then also just reiterate a few of the key items that we've been talking about here over the past few weeks. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and just kind of briefly go over the agenda here. So like I said, we had those webinars here the last few weeks, uh, PPP, HR update. Um, then today we're gonna kind of split things up between uh, this new tax stimulus act for individuals. Um, I'll hit on that and then Andrew's gonna hit on the businesses and then at the end, uh, whatever questions you guys have throughout or at the end, we can go through those with the Q&A session. So as many of you guys are aware of already, uh, with the second round of stimulus, there was more individual stimulus payments that came out with those. Um, with that, uh, $600 per family member. Uh, the first time it was $1,200 per individual plus $500 per dependent. Uh, this time it's flat $600 per family member. Similar phase outs is the first time, um, 150,000 AGI for married, final and joint, 75 for single. Um, your phase out ended at 174,000 married, uh, 87,000 single. So we've had some questions on this. Your payments should have been received by now. If you haven't gotten them, uh, we'll be getting them on your 2020 tax return. Um, with this round, um, I think that the deadline date for the Treasury to get those checks out, mailed or deposited in the accounts was the 15th of January. I know some clients received it after the 15th of January with snail mail. Um, but yeah, if you haven't received them yet, you probably won't. And like I said, we'll pick them up on your 2020 tax return. Uh, just another reminder, uh, this was an easy one to miss. Uh, after the economic payments are received, the uh, Treasury and IRS will send out what's called a Form 1444. Uh, basically, it's, it looks like a letter uh, from the government, but within that letter, the body of the letter will state how much of the economic payment you received. Um, it's pretty important, especially if you were in the phase out, and we'll need to report that on your tax return. So once we reconcile that, if we don't have that right, that could be cause some issues or some IRS notices down the road. So we want to do our best to avoid any of that um, later on. So if you have those form 1444, uh, bring, bring those in with your tax information so we can get those accounted for correctly. All right, a few miscellaneous items here. Uh, medical expense limitation uh, was 10%. It was, it was supposed to go up to 10% here. Now it's, uh, I think it's permanently at the 7.5% level, and that's for anybody that itemizes. So if you use a standard deduction, you know, those haven't changed. 24.8 for married, final, and joint, 12,004 for single. And like I said, that's a permanent change. Another little minor update um, that we've been talking with clients about, the charitable deduction um, was uh, revised a little bit here for non-itemizers. So we found, you know, with the tax law change a couple years ago, you know, 90% plus of our clients are now just using the standard deduction, which I just went over there before. And so if you had any charity or anything like that, you weren't able to deduct it. Um, with the CARES Act and now with this latest stimulus, they've made a few tweaks. Uh, that allow you to take what's called an above the line deduction that's on top of your standard deduction. So for 2020, um, if you're using the standard deduction, any filer can deduct up to $300 in addition, additional to that uh, standard deduction for any charitable giving. So make sure you bring any in any uh, receipts to substantiate those charitable deductions here for 2020. And then for 2021, they're going to increase it uh, so it's $600 for married, final, and joint. So a double there, potentially. A few other nice provisions here. Um, employees who are receiving student loan repayment assistance through their employers can exclude up to $52.50 through 2025. 
Uh, you may recall with the CARES Act, uh, they implemented that for the 2020 tax year. Uh, now with the latest round of stimulus, they have extended that through 2025. Um, they've also extended a lot of miscellaneous tax credits, one of those being the residential energy credits, solar credits. They extended those through 2022. So those will be around a little bit longer. One issue that we dealt with a little bit this year, uh, kind of threw us for a curveball, a couple people. Um, the farmer annual carryback rules changed again. Uh, with the CARES Act, um, they allowed annuals to be carried back again for any individual and farmers, uh, but they basically made you do it over five years uh, versus the old rules, you could do it just two years. Uh, but now with this latest uh, rule change, you can elect to just do a two year carry back on for farmers instead of having to go back five. So that's a nice little change there. It gives you a few more options if you need them. And then they increased the phase out uh, limits for the lifetime learning credit in 2021. So I'll be coming here for this year. All right, so those are some of the key changes on the individual side. So now we'll be shifting over to uh, a lot of the items that impact the businesses and I'll let Andrew take that. Sure. Well, thanks, Clint. So um, yeah, the new tax act for businesses, you know, a lot of it was, um, you know, geared towards PPP. Everyone knows what that means by now. Uh, you know, a lot of PPP questions were answered. Um, and then, you know, there's just a few miscellaneous provisions in this new act uh, that we'll hit on. But a lot of, you know, these first three or four slides, these are going to be, you know, review slides based on, you know, prior PowerPoints or webinars that we've done uh, earlier here in January. So, you know, we'll hit on it again because it does apply to uh, businesses. And, you know, if you have your own uh, business on a Schedule C, uh, these PPP questions and a few others will still apply to you. So. Uh, PPP round two, you know, again, we have to get these first or second draw applications in by March 31st. And these second round applications are, uh, you know, we have to show a 25% drop in our gross receipts. And so what that means is, you know, you look at one quarter in 2020, any quarter in 2020 and compare it to the same quarter in 2019. So if we see a drop of 25% or more, then we're eligible to apply for the second draw, assuming that we've already applied for the first draw. So, you know, a lot of businesses right now, uh, you know, they might not even know if they meet this 25% test. If they didn't apply the first round, uh, you can go back and still apply for that first round here uh, before March 31st. So, you know, just stress to clients, you know, you know, if you would like to apply, apply sooner rather than later. And then, you know, at the bottom here, you know, max loan amounts are two million. We don't run into that too often, but uh, there is a special carve out for restaurants and hotels. So when you're figuring up your eligible loan amount, uh, normally it's take your payroll, uh, figure it up on a monthly basis and you get two and a half times that amount as your PPP loan. Uh, so restaurants and hotels can actually use three and a half times. Right. Yeah, and this is one thing I want to kind of hit on, you know, the, the SBA is still giving out guidance on, on a few items related to the second round PPP, especially around what's uh, what's considered gross receipts and what's not uh, for calculation of that 25% reduction. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussion of what's included, not included. We know for sure the idle and PPP are not included. Um, whether the other stimulus items uh, like uh, the Department of Health and Human Services payments um, CFAP for farmers and a few other things like that. You know, right now, it, you got some people saying they are included, some that aren't, but we're still waiting for the SBA to get some guidance on that. So when you're looking at that reduction, kind of look at it with and without the stimulus to see where you're kind of at, and then you're just going to need to meet with your, your lender or your CPA to discuss, you know, what your next step is there. Um, but yeah, more guidance will be coming from the SBA and some of this stuff. So if you're Kind of on a bubble, just uh, just hang tight, be patient, because it sounds like Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, from a few of the lenders we've talked to, they they feel confident that there's going to be enough money to make it all the way till March 31st, the deadline for applying for the second round of PPP. Right. I can't say that with 100% certainty, but uh, I think if we you know have some patience here, we'll be okay. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and then you know the biggest thing in this tax act for businesses was obviously 
you know, during tax planning time, we weren't sure if these expenses were going to be allowable or deductible on the returns if you use those payroll and rent expenses for the PPP forgiveness. So all that has been cleared up really. Um, it just means at the end of the day, those those proceeds from your PPP loan are not taxable and you get to deduct those payroll costs. So it was a big win. And then lastly, you know, if you got a first round PPP loan and you also applied for the, the idle advance, which was, you know, an online application where you, you know, apply and you, you typically received $1,000 per employee when you applied. If you received both, when you went to get forgiveness on your PPP loan, your bank probably told you you gotta, you gotta pay back these idle advances plus a little bit of interest. Um, so with this new act that cleared that up, so you should be, you know, being, you know, in the next month or so, probably contacted by your bank and, you know, those should be reimbursed to you, any payback that you had due to the idle advance. So another another good thing for, for businesses there. I think that should be it on the slide here. Okay, so employee retention credit. Uh, this is another hot topic, which, um, yeah, right there it says awaiting guidance. So that's what I would urge is, you know, on the employee retention credit, uh, I'll go through some of the basics here, but, you know, biggest thing is that we're not 100% sure how this is going to work. So uh, back in March and April, you know, when the CARES Act came out, it came out with this employee retention credit. And as a stipulation, if you wanted to do the employee retention credit, you were not allowed to do the PPP loan. And so back in March and April, we said, okay, most of our clients will use the PPP loan instead of this credit. So it was kind of out of sight, out of mind until, uh, you know, the end of December here, where they retroactively said, you know, if you applied for the PPP loan, you can now try to get the employee retention credit, which is based on payroll amounts by quarter. So, um, you know, really, we're not sure how that intertwines with the PPP payroll expenses yet, uh, but we will have, you know, once we get some guidance, we'll, we'll let clients know uh, if you, you know, if you're eligible to claim it, as it is a pretty tough credit to get. Um, so, yeah, so there's basically a set of rules for 2020, and we have a set of rules for 2021. So in 2020, uh, in order to even be eligible for this credit, your gross revenues would have had to have dipped at least 50% compared to 2019, that same quarter, or you were shut down by government orders. So, you know, it's gonna be a lot of restaurants. Yeah, you see there at the bottom, uh, restaurants, I know daycares were shut down partially, uh, you know, dentists, doctors, elective surgeries, things like that. So, uh, you know, again, it's not a huge pool of our clients, but it definitely is, uh, you know, um, a group of clients that could benefit from this once we get guidance. So, um, and then 2021's rules, uh, they say that you only need a 20% drop in gross receipts or you were shut down. And the, the credit, you can see there, it's a little bit more lucrative at 70% of wages uh, and it's by quarter. So again, we're gonna, you know, once we get guidance, we'll take a look at our clients, see who could apply and how we think they should apply. Um, I know I'm missing something on this, Clint. If, uh, no. no, I think you're. I think you're hitting it all. I, the biggest thing is, you know, at the with the eligibility part, it's an or. So either you got to show the drop in in gross receipts or revenue, or you were partially or fully shut down because of the government told you you had to. True. And then, like Andrew said, you know, the biggest thing is we're awaiting guidance. Um, we got to get the payroll 941s every other year and stuff done here by the end of this month. So we're gonna get those done. And then if we can go back and get any refunds, we're going to apply for those for, for everybody that uh, is eligible. And we can have some time to take a hard look at this, one, and then two, get some additional guidance that we're waiting on to make sure we uh, handle everything correctly. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say is there's not a rush currently uh, because, one, if you did, um, you know, if you were able to apply in 2020 based on one of those quarters, we can always go back and amend those payroll forms to get the money. So it's not like something has to be done. There's no deadline of March 31st of 2021 or anything like that. So yep. Yep. I should hit on most of that. Yeah. 
So a uh, few options for paid leave uh, now in 2021. So the act extended some of these uh, paid leave credits that employers can receive. So, uh, you know, this is one that we talked about quite a bit in the HR uh, webinar we did last week. So, you know, I'll, I'll defer you to that one if you have more questions, but you know, the biggest change is in 2020, these paid leave credits, you know, you, they were mandatory for employers to follow. Now in 2021, uh, for the first quarter of the year, you can see it expires March 31st, it's voluntary. And, you know, the second bullet point there, you know, this extension of the leave doesn't provide additional leave. So if an employee used it in 2020, they don't get a new set of, uh, you know, limits to use these, uh, these leave credits. So, yeah, and again, you know, if you think this applies to your business, you know, we'll, we'll defer to that other webinar where we had uh, an attorney with McGrath North kind of go through those. So this is a welcome change for a lot of clients. Uh, business meals are now 100% deductible, uh, and that applies for years 2021 and 2022. So, you know, we all know restaurants and bars, those types of industries were hit, you know, harder than most, uh, you know, being shut down. So, you know, the IRS, you know, relax some of those guidelines where currently meals are 50% deductible. So, you know, in these two years, those will actually be 100% deductible. So it doesn't matter if you dine in or take out, um, you know, they're still 100% deductible. And then, you know, we just like to make sure entertainment expense. So, uh, you know, any kind of game tickets or anything like that, those are still 0% deductible. So no change there. But so, you know, if you're looking at your, you know, if you're small business, uh, looking at your account codes or anything, you know, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to separate meals and entertainment for, uh, you know, 2021 and 2022. And then I have one more thing. I know um, on that student loan uh, issue you were talking about, Clint, so employees, if their employer decides to, you know, help pay for their student loans up to that 5250 the employer can't pick and choose who they're giving those benefits to. It needs to be across the board. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. It's not, um, there are some rules that we have to follow. Right. So as an owner, if you have a spouse employed by you or children, you can't just opt to pay your child's student loans off and not any of your other employees that have eligible student loans that can be paid. So, yeah, it could, just has to be non-discriminatory there. And then uh, one other thing, too, I wanted to go back and hit on was on that gross receipts calculation for the 25 percent uh, reduction for PPP. Uh, cost of goods sold is not included in that calc. So for like a Schedule F farmer. Line 1B gets added back to line 9, and then any other taxpayer, you, you exclude your cost of sales from that. So you're looking strictly at gross receipts that are coming in the door, cash in the door from more normal business operations for the most part. And really, that should only apply to those farmers, I would think. I think, you know, non-farming businesses would, were, would only have been taking their gross receipts. Yep. Well, it looks like we got quite a group on here this morning, but uh, if you guys think of anything else, you, you know, feel free to, to either email your CPA or give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help you with uh, any other questions you might have. Um, like we said, uh, we've done the PPP webinar, we've done the HR one, and we thought we'd kind of just uh, tie things up with some of the miscellaneous things we thought a lot of our clients uh, might want to know about. There was thousands of other little things that, stimulus bill that relate to taxes but we kind of cherry pick the things that we thought were the most important for our for our folks and want to go through those with you here this morning but uh if you guys have any other questions feel free to reach out to us um otherwise andrew do you get anything else i don't think so right now i'm looking at the questions box it looks like we've hit on a few of those there so i don't see any others awesome short and sweet this morning sure is all right everybody uh thanks for joining us this morning and uh have a great rest of your week take care thank you